Good morning. All right, we will be reading Psalm 25 today. Um, let's go ahead and pray, and then we will get into it. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, uh, we pray that you would show us grace and mercy today, that you instruct us as we read your word, that you would teach our hearts to be submissive to you and humble, that you would lead us um, through this path of sanctification you have us on, making us more and more into the image of your Son, Christ. And we know that you do that through your word. And so we come to you in faith, trusting you, and um, expecting that you will do what you say. We know that you are a God who um, is uh, honorable, um, consistent, um, unwavering, and so we know that in all things we can trust you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and read Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, O Lord, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Consider my affliction and my trouble, and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes, and with what violent hatred they hate me. Oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. All right, God's word just today in the book of Psalms. Psalm 25. Um, First thing to note um, is that there's a, a footnote in my Bible, probably yours as well, that um, this is an acrostic psalm. There's uh, four or five of them in Psalms, I think, uh, in the book of Psalms. And um, it just means that David has taken the Hebrew alphabet and he's written this psalm along with the, the letters of the Hebrew alphabet with a few slight uh, variations, I understand. Um, it's good to know that. There are many reasons he might have done that, but for us reading it in English, that is by and large lost. Um, since we don't read Hebrew, we wouldn't know, except for the footnote, that it's an acrostic. Um, it would be interesting to see if someone could uh, to reproduce this in English as an acrostic. Um, although there's 26 letters in the English alphabet, it would be probably... Um, futile to do so because too much of the meaning of the original would be lost. So we have what we have in English um, translated um, word for word instead of poetic idea for poetic idea. <clears throat> so um, a as David opens a psalm, he, he starts by telling God that he trusts him. He trusts that God will protect those who wait on him. In verse 4 and 5, 
he asks that the Lord teach and lead him in his truth. Verse 6 through 7, David asks that God remember him according to God's love and not to remember his sins. In verses 8, 9, and 10, the Lord instructs sinners, is what's, what we're told, that the Lord teaches and leads the humble, um, and that um, the Lord's uh, the Lord's paths are of steadfast love and faithfulness. Um, in verses 11 through 15, we see that the man who fears the Lord is instructed, um, and his soul abides in well-being, his offspring inherit the land, he has friendship of the Lord, um, he knows the Lord's covenant, and looks to the Lord to be saved. So this is the man who fears the Lord. In verses, verses 16 through 18, David asks God to consider his affliction and distress and trouble, to be gracious to him and to forgive all of his, sin, his sins. Verse 19 through 20, he states again that he takes refuge in God and asks that God preserve him, deliver him, guard his soul, and keep him from being put to shame. All right, so... From the outset of this psalm, David is stating complete trust in God, in the Lord. And the things that he trusts about the Lord are, are things that God has communicated as from old, what he has shown his people, things that David knows to be true, and specifically concerning himself, he's trusting that God knows him, or knows him in in every way. So God knows his sins. Uh, verse 11, for instance, for, um, for your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Right? So God knows David's sins. And, and again, he's asking 18 that God forgive all his sins. So God knows him and his sins. God also knows how he has been sinned against. Verse 19 Consider how many are my foes, and with what violent hatred they hate me. 16 through 18, he speaks of how he's lonely and afflicted, of his troubles, his distresses. So these are the ways that he is suffering. So God knows David's sins. God knows the way David has been sinned against. And God knows all of the troubles that David is facing from outside and from within. <clears throat> and then, um, so, God, so David know, uh, trusts that God knows him. And then David trusts that God will keep him from being put to shame. Um, this is um, what he's asking when uh, he says, uh, Oh, guard my soul, deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in, in you. He's trusting God that he will not be put to shame. So there is this deep, deep trust that David has in all ways, all ways that um, you could really think of from um, God's knowledge of the most intimate parts of his being, the good and the bad, all the way through trusting him to actually take action, to do what he does to be just and to be upright. So... The question we often have with David is, um, why would God take David's side over his enemies? So he's describing, and of course, we're hearing David's side here. This is a psalm of David. This is not a psalm of David's enemies. Um, so why, though, would we expect God, or why would God take David's side instead of the enemy's side? David is adamant that God is on his side. And we know because this is in God's word um, that, well, first of all, the very fact that David's psalm survived is evidence that God was on David's side, sustained him, upheld him, and that David was in the right as far as being on the Lord's side. So why is it that God chose to take David's side? Um, in these matters and not the enemies of David. Uh, well, one thing we see in this psalm 
that David states is a fact, is that the Lord um, takes the side of those who fear him. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him. Do you want the Lord's friendship? Fear him. Um, But when we back up even further, we see in this psalm that it is actually God that taught David how to do this, how to fear him. Because God is good and upright. In verses 8 and 10, we see, Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. It doesn't say that God takes someone who already has something and teaches them the way. He takes sinners and instructs them in the way. And what is the way? To be humble. He leads the humble in what is in what is right. So he takes these sinners, humbles them, leads them in what is right, teaches the humble his way. So it is God coming to sinners to instruct them. And David is one one of them. He didn't do anything that caused God to choose him. God just showed him mercy. He's a sinner. God chose to instruct him. Um, And then God preserves the one he has instructed, the one he has taught to fear him. In verse 12, who is the man who fears the Lord? Him he will instruct in the way that he should choose. So God chooses to instruct the way he would. And he has taught this man to fear the Lord. He's taught a sinner to walk in a way that is humble. He's taught a sinner to fear him. And then he chooses how to continue to instruct that man who fears him. And there are wonderful benefits to being a friend of the Lord, um, of, of being in this position where he has shown grace and mercy. Um, and throughout all of this psalm, there, there's nowhere where David takes any credit for any of this. He's constantly asking that the Lord show him mercy. The Lord be gracious to him. The Lord, please consider my affliction. Lord, I trust you that you will not put, um, allow me to be put to shame, that you will um, make your paths, your ways known to me. You'll teach me your paths. Um, I wait on you, Lord, because the Lord is the one who's going to take action. David doesn't take credit for any of this. He's simply saying, I wait on the Lord. The Lord is the one who started this work in me. He instructed me. He's leading me. So I'm going to wait here um, for the Lord to show up and, and continue to do the work he's begun. So again, the Lord taught him to fear, how to fear him. That was verse 12. Um, the Lord instructed David, who was a sinner, how to be humble. Um, The Lord leads David, who is humble, in what is right. It is the Lord's path and the Lord's steadfast love. It is the Lord's graciousness and the Lord's instruction. And ultimately, when we come to the end of the psalm and David says, O guard my soul and deliver, deliver me, Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. And then he makes this statement, May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on you. It's not David's integrity and uprightness that will be preserving him. It's the Lord's integrity and uprightness. And any integrity and uprightness that David may possess has been given to him by the Lord. He has been instructed in how to walk upright and in an integrous manner. It's the waiting of David on the Lord that is his really best decision. (laughs) It is what we should all do. We should all acknowledge that it is the Lord who moves in all things. It is no action or decision of our own. He has brought us to where we are. He has instructed us. He has shown us his path. He's leading us all the way. 
It is his integrity and his uprightness that will preserve us, that we can take refuge in. And that really is our hope now and in eternity is not our own integrity and uprightness, but the integrity and uprightness of Christ. That is how we will not be put to shame. Because not being put to shame temporarily with some enemies here on earth, people who don't like us here, is a, a, a small fleeting reward. Standing before God and not being put to shame by our sins and our own transgressions, our own guilt, but being instead delivered from them and having Christ guard our soul in his integrity and uprightness, that is the great hope that we have. And in that way, we are redeemed. When, when uh, David ends saying, Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles, he's claiming for himself, I think, God's promise to Israel in general. And, and that's something that we all do is we all um, come before the Lord and say, God, you've made these promises to your people, and I am one of your people. You have chosen me, and God, I throw myself at your mercy, and I wait for you, and I wait for your steadfast love, your integrity and uprightness to redeem me, and I trust you in this. This is the posture of a humble, repentant heart, someone who knows they are a sinner and knows they have nothing to offer God, knows that there's zero we can do and that God has done all of it, every single bit of it. It would be completely arrogant and wrong for us to claim any of this work of God. It is he who has done this. My conclusion, for today is that the best decision that any of us can make is to throw ourselves upon the mercy of the Lord, acknowledging that we are guilty sinners in need of his instruction and salvation. He instructs, he leads, and pardons us, not because of anything we have done, but because of his integrity and uprightness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the fact that we can call you Father, that you have instructed us to do so, is a wonderful evidence of the way you um, uphold us, that you have changed us and lead us in your way. Thank you that you have made us your children, and that you cause um, us to be seen and acknowledged as right before you because of your Son, Christ. God, we need you every day, not just for that initial salvation, but for um, walking in your paths daily. God, instruct us in how to be upright, how to be integrous, how to honor you daily with our lives. We know that is your desire for us to be holy as you are holy, and so we trust you daily for our salvation and daily for our walk with you. It's in Christ's name we pray these things. Amen. Have a wonderful day. I will see you again.